Welcome to Multi-Class Mondays. I'm Neil Sutherland. I'm the steward for the series, and I'll be racing in the GT4 class. I've been working alongside the series admin, Jeff Wentworth, to bring you this series. Jeff will be racing in the GT3 class. We put a lot of time into the planning and the rules, so please make sure you've done all the required reading. Because multi-class racing in ACC is not completely supported, the driver's briefing is mandatory every week. Directly following the briefing, the race password will be released and you are free to leave the voice channel. The server will have a 10 minute practice session to allow everyone to join before moving on to qualifying. Once you are in the server, please note that the in-game text chat is off limits to everyone except admins. Monday's race is the sprint format, which means that we have a 40 minute race with one pit stop required. There is a 10 minute pit stop window, which is centered upon the middle of the race and during the pit stop, changing tires is required and adding fuel is also required. Pit entry here at Paul Ricard is very tight and reminder you must stay within the white line at the whole pit entry. Do not swing wide to the left to gain a better angle for the pit entry. You must commit to the pits before the white line starts. For qualifying, the session will be 30 minutes long with GT3s taking the first 15 and GT4s taking the last 15 minutes. This means that once the qualifying timer strikes 15 minutes remaining, GT3s may finish their flying lap but may not start a new one. Only at this time, with 15 minutes remaining, may GT4s leave their pit box and head toward the pit exit to begin their qualifying session. GT4s may not line up at pit exit or leave their pit box before the 15 minutes remaining mark. Once the qualifying session ends, there will be a 3 minute pre-race grid timer, which is required in order to prepare for the multi-class start procedure. ACC will likely not place everyone where they need to be for a proper multi-class race start, but that's okay because we use a free full formation lap, which allows us to accomplish two important tasks. The first. GT3 drivers who qualify behind the GT3 field will pass the GT4s and rejoin the GT3s right at the start of the formation lap. Second, GT4 drivers need to determine their own side of the grid. Odds will be on the inside, evens will always be on the outside. While still in the garage, you can go to timetables, qualifying, and then filter by GT4 class, where it will show you your qualifying position within only the GT4 class. At the start of the formation lap, ACC's in-game engineer will call for single file, which has a speed limit of 100 kilometers per hour or 62 miles per hour. During this single file, weaving and dragging brakes is allowed, but slamming on the brakes is not allowed. Near sector three, ACC's in-game engineer will call for double file, which has a speed limit of 60 km per hour or 37 miles per hour. During double file, dragging brakes is allowed, but weaving and slamming on the brakes are not allowed. During double file, gaps and speed changes should be kept to a minimum. Jumped starts will be penalized. The gap from the GT4 to the GT3 field is determined by the GT4 leader, but 15 to 20 car lengths is recommended. Once the green lights flash, both classes are racing. During the first few turns, the emphasis should be on safety, not on gaining positions. It is recommended that drivers stay in their lane for as long as possible, which may require you to lift off the throttle a few times. Because the grid is so bunched up at the start, safe driving is encouraged by the use of a lap one orange zone. The orange zone map is posted in the ACC Monday News Discord channel and at Paul Ricard goes from turn one through turn seven, ending on the Mistral Strait. In the orange zone, clean passes are still allowed, but any penalties resulting from an incident in the orange zone will be more harsh. Once the race is off and running, the GT3 drivers will inevitably catch the GT4 field. In these scenarios, drivers from the GT4 class deserve the right to drive their own line and pace without having to yield the racing line. The GT4 drivers are expected to hold their racing line as best they can, allowing the GT3 driver behind to pick their location to pass. The two safest places for GT3s to pass GT4 cars are down the straightaways 
and early in the braking zones. There is a special caution area at Paul Ricard in turn 14, which is the final turn. If the GT3 drivers are not able to achieve significant overlap very early in the braking zone, please wait until the straightaway to pass the GT4 cars. Sometimes GT4s are required to cut across the track when the racing line also cuts from one side to the other. For example, the special note on the orange zone map shows how at the exit of the right hand turn 9, it is expected that the GT4 drivers will be cutting back across the right side of the track to set up for the entry of the left hand turn 10. The GT3 driver behind in this case is expected to patiently wait for the inside line to open up for a pass into turn 10. If there are any questions, please let me know by posting a message in the ACC general chat and tagging me and Jeff Wentworth, and we will see you on Monday.